Today on whatHiFi.com, we're taking a look at Volvo's XC90 SUV. Now, there's a couple of reasons we're interested in this particular car. The first is it offers an option of a Bowers & Wilkins sound system. And the second, it's got a very clever, smart, intuitive touchscreen interface. Looking at the central display, it's a nine inch screen, uh, so it doesn't look too dissimilar to an Apple iPad. There's even a home button at the bottom to get you out of the menus and back to the main screen. The bulk of your car settings can be accessed through the screen by just simply swiping and tapping. You can swipe right to take you to all the normal car features and car setup, or swipe left and that'll take you to source selection where you can choose from the radio or CD player or streaming music over Bluetooth. It makes for a really clutter-free center console. Normally we're used to seeing um, consoles where there's buttons everywhere and it gets quite complicated but on this Volvo it's nice to see a clean dashboard and by the standards of other in-car displays we've come across it's, it's quite a big improvement. It's probably the first time we've really been able to call an in-car touchscreen um, slick and responsive. You can navigate menus without too much hassle, the icons are quite of a decent size so you don't have to be really careful with where you prod the screen and um, once you get your head around how the screen actually works um, it's a really hassle-free experience. So it's nice to see a car manufacturer actually taking note of the passenger as well as the driver. Um, with this big display, some manufacturers like Audi, they're kind of doing away with the central display um, for some of its models, such as the Audi TT, where the virtual cockpit is the only display really in the car. So the standard uh, sound system available with the XC90 is a 10-speaker uh, 330 watt setup. Now this premium system with the Bowers and Wilkins speakers ups the ante considerably. So in here you've got 19 speakers uh, and a 12 channel 1400 watt amp courtesy of Harman. So the first thing that strikes you uh, about the Bowers and Wilkins system is this tweeter on top technology which is used. You can see it on the top of the dashboard. Um, now BMW claims that keeping the tweeter separate from an enclosure or cabinet allows for a much cleaner and purer sound. It also means you can minimise the acoustic reflections from the windscreen, which can also hinder sound quality. It uses technology derived from BMW's iconic Nautilus tweeters, but unlike the BMW system available for the BMW 7 Series, it doesn't use a diamond dome tweeter, just a standard aluminium design. The system also includes BMW's trademark yellow Kevlar mid-range drivers. There's a mixture of 10cm and 8cm units within the car, and they can be found beneath grills specially designed to allow more sound to escape through them. So obviously you've got the tweeter on top in the centre of the dashboard and the other speakers are obviously dotted around the interior. You've got um, tweeter mid-range drivers uh, in the front and rear of the car. There's also a similar mid-range tweeter combination in the roof line in the rear of the car to help with the surround sound. Now there is a subwoofer, a dedicated subwoofer in the car and Volvo have dubbed it their fresh air subwoofer where a 25 centimetre driver is actually built into the body of the car as opposed to being used in its own dedicated enclosure. Now Volvo claims it allows the sub to move more air and produce extremely low bass. Volvo includes three different audio processing modes to help you tailor the listening experience. Now all of these can be found uh, via the sound experience icon on the display. Tap that and it brings up the three different options. You've got studio where you can tweak the sound for the driver all the passengers or focus its efforts just in the rear of the car. The second processing mode is individual stage. Now this allows you to manipulate intensity and envelopment. Now the former basically relates to the closest and depth of the sound, while the latter alters the width of the sound stage. So you can have it leaking out a little bit further to the sides to give you slightly more of a surround feel. Finally, you've got the concert hall setting. Now, this recreates the acoustics from the Gothenburg Concert Hall and is geared more towards classical and orchestral pieces. Now, we can see why Volvo has done it. I mean, Gothenburg is the company's hometown after all, but to be honest, we didn't find it wholly convincing. We gravitated more towards the individual stage option, tweaking the intensity and development settings to get a fairly even but not overpowering split of both. We think the studio option sounds a little bit more cluttered and slightly messier in comparison. So how then does this BMW sound system actually perform? Well, the tweeter on top isn't just a conversation starter. It does actually work really well in this system. Eyes are relatively clear and detailed. You get a good sense of space and the sound stage doesn't sound congested. Uh, in general, the tonal balance of the system is good too. There's a smoothness and a sense of refinement across the frequency range. And there's no real element that sounds too spiky uh, or out of place. We just like a bit more excitement from the system. It's a little too safe sounding for our tastes. Uh, there's a real lack of punch and drama to the sound, especially in the bass. And you're not quite as enthused or captivated by the system as um, we have been by other systems that we've heard, such as the B&O system in the Audi TT or the Meridian system in the Range Rover Sport. Pardon the pun, but it needs just a, a lot more drive. So there you have it. 
If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and add us on Google+.